Well hello there and welcome back to our video series on the topic of homeostasis. So in our last video, we looked at the definition of homeostasis. And we saw that homeostasis refers to the maintenance of a relatively constant internal environment. And we looked at how homeostasis is important for the survival of ourselves and hence for our own survival. Now the next question is, how is this homeostasis achieved? I mean, how does the body manage to maintain its internal environment? And the simple answer is that homeostasis is achieved through control. And what type of control? Homeostatic control. Controlling what? Controlling the many different conditions and variables in our body. For example, our body temperature, our blood glucose levels, our water potential, the pH, the, the concentration of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood. All of these are conditions, and all of these conditions make up the body's internal environment. So by controlling all of these conditions through homeostatic control, I can achieve homeostasis, which is a relatively constant internal environment. All right, so the key phrase here is homeostatic control uh, of the many different conditions in our body. So then the question is, how does homeostatic control work? So let's take body temperature as an example. How is body temperature maintained? And how does the homeostatic control of body temperature work? Or blood glucose, how is blood glucose level maintained? And how does the homeostatic control of blood glucose work? These are the questions we're going to be exploring together in this video. So we're going to look at how homeostatic control works. And while looking at homeostatic control, we're going to learn a new term called negative feedback. And that has a very special meaning in biology. It doesn't mean all this feedback survey stuff. It has a special biological meaning, which we'll look at. And finally, we'll end off by looking at some examples of homeostatic control, uh, which take place in our body. So here are the textbook pages to read if you need some clarity. So to begin exploring this question of how homeostatic control works, I'm going to ask you a rather insensitive question. And that is, are you ready for it? What is your ideal weight? Aha. Yeah, of course, not many of us like to review such details, but we do have, most of us, have some idea of what sort of weight we want to be. Uh, or would like to be. Uh, for me, I would like to maintain my weight. So let's take it for example that I would like to maintain my weight at about 60 kilograms. That's my ideal weight. So I want you to picture in your mind that ideal weight of yours. For me, uh, let's take it that it's about 60 kilograms. So this is the weight that I would like to maintain myself at. So let's call this ideal weight our set point or a norm. But it's kind of like the point that you want to be, a set point, the norm, uh, that I want to maintain. Now, let's say I go out for a, a very nice buffet with my friends, I go eat a lot of food for Christmas, and I gain weight. <gasps> I stand on this weighing scales, and I gain weight, and now my weight is like maybe 63 kilograms. Wow. Now, what do I call this? Let's call this a stimulus. This is a stimulus because it is a change from the norm. In this case, it is an increase from the norm, right? What would my response be if I saw myself gain weight? Remember, I want to maintain my ideal weight. Well, my response would be to lose weight, of course. So I'll go and run, you know, starve a bit here and there, and I want to lose weight so that I can bring myself back to the ideal weight. Now let's think about the reverse situation. Let's say I go for a long time to a camp or outward bound camp or something and I don't get much food to eat. So I end up losing weight. I come back home and I find that my weight is uh, 57 kilograms. <gasps> I've lost a lot of weight. We can also call this a stimulus because it is a change from the norm. This time it's a decrease from the norm. Well, what would my response be? Remember, I want to maintain my ideal weight. So my response would be to gain back that weight, right? I would eat properly over the next few days 
and I want to gain back so I can come back again to my ideal weight. Okay, so let's draw a simple table to summarize what we've just seen. So we have a certain set point or ideal weight in our mind. And then when we encounter the stimulus of gaining weight, right, because we eat a lot, then our response was to lose weight. I want to lose weight so I can go back to my original set point. And if the stimulus was that I lost weight over a camp, then my response would be to gain that weight back so that I could go back to my original set point. So I hope you can observe that there's kind of a pattern in how you respond to a certain stimulus. That it seems to be that you always respond in an opposite way to your stimulus. When you gain weight, you respond by losing, right? That's the opposite. When you lose weight, you respond by gaining. That's the opposite. So the general principle here is that you respond to a stimulus, a change from the norm, by opposing the change. But you do the opposite. The stimulus is a gain, you respond by losing. The stimulus is a loss, you respond by gaining. Right? And that helps you to maintain your weight. And it turns out that this principle, where you respond in an opposite manner to the stimulus, this principle also happens in homeostatic control. So let's take a closer look at the homeostatic control of blood glucose levels. And we'll see how there's this same principle that you respond in an opposite manner to the stimulus. So imagine that you have a certain ideal or normal blood glucose level. Let's say about 70 units in the human body, 70 units of glucose. So this would be your set point or your norm. Now of course you go out and then you eat a very big lollipop. Let's imagine that you guzzle it all down, it's full of sugar, full of glucose. So what happens? your blood glucose level increases above the norm. And remember we call this a stimulus because it is a change from the norm. Now in this case, how does your body respond? Well, the logical response would be that your body will decrease your blood glucose levels. It will decrease it so that you can go back to your set point. Now, similarly, um, imagine that you go hungry, you don't eat a lot of food for a long time, and your blood glucose level decreases below the norm, so less blood glucose. This is also called a stimulus. This is a change from the norm, it's a decrease from the norm. What would your body's response be? Well, obviously it would be to increase the blood glucose level so that you can go back to your set point. So let's summarize it again with this table here. Uh, remember we have a certain normal ideal blood glucose level, that's our set point. Now, if the stimulus is that your blood glucose level increases above the norm, then your body responds by decreasing the blood glucose, by right? doing the opposite. And if the stimulus is that your blood glucose decreases below the norm, then your body responds by doing the opposite, which is to increase the blood glucose back uh, to the set point. So the general principle here is that your body responds to a stimulus right, by opposing the change, by doing the opposite. Or I want to put it differently. Uh, it may sound a bit more complicated, but the same meaning is there. The body responds to a stimulus by giving the reverse effect of the stimulus. So if the stimulus is that um, the blood glucose increases above the norm, then the body responds by giving the reverse effect of the stimulus, which is to decrease the blood glucose and bring it back to normal. Now, this principle here is called negative feedback. Right? And that is what negative feedback is, when the body responds with the reverse effect of the stimulus. Okay, so look back at your notes now, and let's summarize what we've seen so far. So the big question we had is, how does homeostatic control work? And we've seen that uh, the body maintains the conditions of its internal environment, for example, blood glucose level, through homeostatic control. And hopefully you've seen that homeostatic control works by involving negative feedback. Homeostatic control involves negative feedback. So what is negative feedback? Uh, notice I've placed a star here because it's very important. Uh, negative feedback is a process where a system, for example, your body system, responds to a stimulus, right, a change from the norm, 
uh, by giving the reverse effect of the stimulus. Right? You've seen that in the previous two examples. And, and why does it give this reverse effect of the stimulus? Why does it give the opposite effect? It's in order to restore the original state of the system. So we saw that if blood glucose increase, the body will respond by decreasing the blood glucose, the reverse effect, in order to restore the original state. So in order to bring the blood glucose back to the set point. And this definition here is very important. Make sure you understand it before moving on. So we've seen that in homeostatic control, uh, which involves negative feedback, there's a set point, right? Usually there's some set point. Then uh, some stimulus happens, some change from the norm, and then your res response happens to restore the set point. So this is negative feedback. A set point, uh, there's a change from the set point, and then the response gives the reverse effect of the stimulus and restores the set point. Now we're going to see that it's a bit more complicated than that. There are a few other elements that are important in negative feedback. So between the stimulus and the response, there are also three very important elements or keywords. There are the receptor that detects the stimulus, there's a control center, and then there's a corrective mechanism that brings about the response. So let's have a closer look at that using blood glucose as an example. So we've seen already that we begin with a set point. Uh, the set point, let's take it to be 70 units of blood glucose. But after you eat a lot of sugar, there's a stimulus uh, where the blood glucose increases above the norm. So let's take that as now the blood glucose has gone up to 80 units. So here's where the receptor comes in. The receptor detects the stimulus. In this case, the receptor is found in the pancreas and it detects the blood glucose level as 80 units. So blood glucose level is now 80 units. The receptor sends this information to a control center. Uh, the control center is also in the pancreas in this case. Now what the control center does is that it compares the current level, which is 80 units, to the set point, which is 70 units. And the control center concludes that <gasps> We are too high. The blood glucose is too high. It is above the set point. So what does it do? The control center will then at activate a corrective mechanism. Right? And this corrective mechanism uh, for blood glucose is that it will secrete more insulin and it will cause more glucose to be absorbed into the cells from the blood or more glucose to be converted to glycogen. So basically removing glucose from the blood. So this corrective mechanism um, will result in the blood glucose level decreasing, right? which is the response, which brings our blood glucose back to the set point. At this point, there's also a signal sent back to the receptor to tell the receptors that we're back at 70 units, so don't need to do the corrective mechanism anymore. Switch it off. So we're going to end off with a diagram, a diagram showing homeostatic control more generally, right, which can be applied to many different kinds of conditions. So you see that in homeostatic control, uh, there's always a set point or a norm. And then when there's a stimulus, right, when a certain condition changes or increases above the norm, uh, there is a receptor that will detect the stimulus and send the information to a control center. Uh, the control center will compare the current level of the condition to the set point. And then the uh, control center will decide to activate the corrective mechanism. And the control center usually sends out some sort of signals to uh, some target organs or effectors um, to carry out a response. Right? And in this case, because the stimulus was that the condition increased, the response is to decrease the condition and to bring it back to the set point. Right? And once it's back to the set point, um, a signal is sent to the receptor to ask it to stop the corrective mechanism. So in the reverse case, uh, the stimulus may be that the condition, let's say blood glucose level, decreases below the norm. Right? Again, the receptor detects the stimulus and sends information to the control center, which compares the condition to the set point, finds that the condition is now below the set point, so activates a corrective mechanism by sending signals to the target organs or effectors to carry out a response, uh, which is to increase the condition or the blood glucose back to the set point. 
Alright, so now uh, let's end off here and I'll continue the next video to highlight some more things about this diagram.